welcome to the training sessions on training and development. Today we are going to discuss on a very important topic which is train the trainers. So let us see what this lecture covers. This part of the lecture session will be held on train the trainers, return on investment evaluation and important points for the trainer to remember. Now, why it is important to train the trainer? This question usually comes out of a need to justify the time and money expenditures involved in training. Naturally, we want to demonstrate that there are measurable benefits and sound reasons to support the decisions to train. Some possible reasons are cost savings, increased sales and services, improved productivity, competitiveness and profitability, and regulatory compliance. Sometimes the reasons do not appear to be connected to a monetary value also. Perhaps they relate to improved customer satisfaction, improved technological expertise, increased understanding of your organization and markets, better staff morale and management staff relations, greater staff flexibility and loyalty, enhanced decision making. Now, train the trainer initiative can be training programs that equip experienced trainers with the skills necessary to deliver content such as new technologies or fresh HR program. Train the trainer programs can equip trainers and instructional designers with the skills they need to provide the best learning experience to employees. We have touched upon some of these skills in the previous discussions. Now, who can join in train the trainer sessions? Anybody who is planning a career in training and development, newly appointed trainers, teachers and training designers, on-the-job trainers, trainers, instructors, soft skill trainers who need to upskill themselves, team leaders, staffs who are involved in administration, management, delivery, design and assessment. Now, the major elements of train the trainer program is like it, it covers important components in the curriculum such as team building, basic presentation and facilitation skills, training design principles, visualization, learning space design, classroom management, group facilitation, interaction and group dynamics, experiential learning, logistic and learning environment, evaluation and impact assessment of training. Now we will discuss some of the sample contents of Train the Trainer. The International Training of Trainers Forum of International Labor Organization ILO has designed contents for its generic training which may be important for the learners like defining learning and training and characteristics of adult learning styles, learning need analysis, the learning management cycle from needs analysis to evaluation, get started as a trainer which is coaching, managing a group of learners, knowledge sharing techniques, facilitation skills, action oriented learner center training, writing our own trainer's manual, participatory instructional design, the different phases of evaluation. The trainer's development program is very important. Recognizing its importance in the training function, the trainer's development program was started by Government of India, Department of Personnel and Training in the early 1990s. It was for developing a cadre of professional trainers and resource persons in the country to create a cascading and multiplier effect by developing the central, state and union territories employees as master trainers and recognized trainers of various training of trainers packages. Now, types of trainers development programs. 
there are various trainer development programs so which are sponsored by government of india under trainer development program at various training institutes this could be training need analysis design of training direct trainer skills evaluation of training management of training experiential learning tools mentoring skills facilitation skills introduction to system approach to training courses so you can take this whole package or you can even go for part capsules of each one of this now it is very important to understand how to design a train the trainer program so to build the train the trainer program like if you are training the trainers then how to design that program it is very important and critical to take into consideration what the learner needs to know to perform well on the job both the technical expertise and the soft skills there are four steps approach such as purpose and assessment planning and preparation presentation and facilitation performance and evaluation and it has to be kept in mind like when we are talking of train the trainers program it is very important like the trainer gets to understand the corporate strategy and the training and development activities so the train the trainer program should start with a brief understanding of the trainer about the corporate strategy and what kind of training should be given to achieve a particular corporate strategy like when we find over here according to porter the uh, strategy is that of differentiation and in my sense no we find a prospective strategy the training and development activity that gets connected to it is hire and train high quality employees institute development program for employee advancement and high potential employees if it is cost leadership and defender then we get for train for job specific skills and cost efficiency develop managers in a cost conscious culture now the trainer has to know these things and suggest these things to the organizations also in a cost leadership strategy where it is analyzer the training and development activity which are connected are train employees around company's core competency focus on career development rather than growth opportunities and in reactor strategy it is offer outplacement services retrain workers when they are reductions is force now we have to understand who are the stakeholders of training the trainer has to understand very clearly who are the stakeholders of training they are the participants or audience functional heads or employees managers trainers subject matter experts instructors who could be internal and external operations and administrations it logistics training managers and team the content developers customers who could be internal or external to the organization training vendors leaders or managing directors hr business partners society community finance head and the budget we have gone through the discussions of some of these topics earlier also we are again summarizing it over here so that we know like if you have to train the trainer then what are the aspects which are must to be remembered and must to be known by the uh, trainers and we can also design programs accordingly the tools for trainers the training tools are all those programs platforms or templates that help trainers deliver the training to their learners we can find out four categories of training and development tools required for trainers like learning management system content authoring tools video editing software and social media discussion on this have already been done in the earlier lectures learning management system 
the best training tool for trainers who want to create courses, manage users, and track the performance of their training and learner is the learning management system. It is easy to use and easy to go for live online training that helps to achieve a much shorter on training investment. Content authoring tools. There are many learning management systems that come with built-in authoring tools so we don't have to switch between platform to deliver high quality training. We can simply create an account, access training hub and start building our own courses right away. Now some of the publishers are also giving the uh, teachers this opportunity also to create their own courses in their platform. In a sense, authoring tools are softwares platform that let trainers add a variety of media and multimedia files to create engaging training. Video editing software, one of the most overlooked training tools for trainers is video editing software. Now it can be done by smart smartphone that's never been easier to make courses more fun and captivating. Play around video types to rock the courses. There are some common formats of video editing such as talking head videos, screen recording, video presentations, documentations and many more. So it, it is becoming very evident like the trainer needs to be updated about the technology, upcoming technology, animations, maybe video editing to make training sessions more interesting. Social media can be really powerful training and development tools. There's an overwhelming surge in popular social media platforms like Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, Facebook, YouTube, etc. This alone means that this is where the learners like to hang out when they have some time to spare. As a trainer, connecting with learners on their favorite platforms is an excellent way to personalize the learning experience. Now, what is the role of trainer in the training session? This needs to be discussed in details because sometimes we like we are confused, like should we play, only be lecturing, should we be interacting, what, what will be the role of the trainer or should we be facilitating? Let us see. The role of a trainer is to develop a competency and skill sets of the individual to perform his or her job effectively in the workplace. The trainer should communicate to the trainees about what is expected out of a training in simple and professional way. The role of a trainer includes training plan, timing of different training sessions, choosing the relevant training methods, preparing the training materials and aids, conducting training sessions and evaluating the post-training session. There are some emerging training roles which have been listed over here. Like knowing more and more about people learning styles, training line managers how to train, guiding ex executives in establishing strategic directions for the organizations, facilitating process improvement and or teaching line managers how to do it, constantly being in touch with the employees and work processes and be aware of their skill needs, Acquiring in-depth knowledge of the organization and its mission and goals. Knowing information technology and explore the use of electronic training opportunities, including development of multimedia training programs where it is feasible and appropriate. Entrenched training as an integral activity in the organization. Facilitating problem-solving teams help managers to think through performance and solve them either through training or otherwise help trainees to think over their jobs. 
Now, it is very important to know about the learning styles of the learners and also the educator's role and the learning cycle. So, first here we will focus on the educator's role and the learning cycle. So, what we can see in the learning cycle, your style could be either learner focus or subject focus, it could be action focus or meaning focus. So, when you are learner focus and action focus, your role is that of a coach where you applied collaborative work one to one with the learners, provide feedback and development in the context. Where it is subject focus and also action focus, it is a standard setter and evaluator. Objective result oriented sets performing objectives structures learning evaluation. Where it is subject focus and meaning focus, the role of trainer is that of a subject expert where it is reflective, authoritative, systematically analyzes and organizes subject matter, uses lectures and text. Whether it is meaning focus and learner focus, it is again the role is that of a facilitator, which is warm, affirming, promotes inside-out learning, creates personal relationships and dialogues. So, what is the focus like whether you want to be focusing on the learner or the subject or the action, the meaning, the, you have to be flexible with the different kinds of role that you need to play as per the need of the situation, need of the organization and the task given to you. So, we can like see which role we are going to play at what time as a trainer. The facilitator role when facilitating educators help learners to get in touch with their personal experience and reflect on it. They adopt a warm affirming style to draw out learners interests, intrinsic motivation and self-knowledge. The subject expert role in their role as subject expert, educators help learners to organize and connect their reflections to the knowledge base of the subject matter. They adopt an authoritative reflective style. As a standard setter and evaluator, educators help learners master the application of knowledge and skill in order to meet the performance requirements. They adopt an objective results oriented style as they set the knowledge requirements needed for quality performance. The coaching role. In the coaching role, educators help learners apply knowledge to achieve the goals. They adopt a collaborative, encouraging style, often working one on one with the individuals to help them learn from their experiences in the life context. Some new skills which are required for trainer, this we have discussed earlier, but again we are emphasizing on it because these are very important skills, which are that of listening, negotiating, coaching, facilitating small group interactions, awareness of different learning styles, measuring and evaluating, strategic planning, problem solving, facilitating organizational change and communication skills. So, we have discussed like awareness of the learning styles is very important for the trainer to know about the learning styles of the in, your trainees. So, here we have the Cole's learning cycle where we find like the learner can learn by either concrete experience or abstract conceptualization or by ex active experimentation or reflective observation. So, when the learner has wants to learn by concrete experience and reflective observation, this style is called the divergent style. So, how they do it is compare it with reality and then identify the problem. If the learner is learning through reflective observation and abstract conceptualization, this style is called the assimilating style. They select a problem and then try to consider alternative solutions for it. Abstract conceptualization and ex active experimentation, this is a uh, 
converging style in which evaluate consequence of a collusion, select a solution. Active experimentation and concrete experience, this is called accommodating. So, where we execute a solution and choose a model or a good. So, we can have people who are more focused on either of these uh, styles or we can find like these are the this moves around in a cycle where we start with the like concrete experience uh, then reflective observations then abstract conceptualization then we go on for active experimentation and then again we try to map it with the concrete experience so this moves around in a cycle where like we it starts with identifying the problem, select a problem, considering alternative solutions, evaluate consequence of a solution, select a solution, then execute a solution and choose a model or a goal. So, we, we can move fine like the uh, every person will move through different phases of it and the cycle is completed as you learn or we may find people who would love to learn in certain ways. Some people uh, love by uh, love to learn by reflective observations. Some may be more active experimenters. So they have their own learning styles, and you or a combination of learning styles which they would prefer. So as a trainer, what we need to understand how to play, like design our training material so that we come closer to the uh, learning styles of the individuals and they are more able to learn in a proper way. So it is very important as a trainer to understand the learning styles of the learners. We can, uh, this is a learning style inventory and we can administer it on our learners to find out what is the combination of the learning styles, maybe the majority of the training group that we are having, people are having. And accordingly, we can design our uh, like uh, training materials, uh, all deliverables also. Now, we will discuss this learning styles in detail. The learning style which is diverging, which is concrete experience plus reflective observation is known as a facilitator or motivator. They generate ideas, works well with people, share ideas, very involved with learning, ask why or why not. It is important for trainers to know these details so that they can identify the learning styles very quickly. The diverging and the creating style, the dominant learning modes are like CE and RO. Learners view concrete situations from many points of view. They perform better in brainstorming sessions or situations that call for looking at things from many angles approach is to observe rather than take action. Prefer to work in teams to gather information, listen with an open mind and receive feedback. Learning style is assimilating which is reflective observation and abstract conceptualization. They are called theoretical or basic scientists. Theoretical interests combine diverse ideas, create models, analytical or inductive ask what do I have here? Assimilating which is planning. Dominant learning modes are RO and AC. Use inductive reasoning and assimilating disparate objective observations into an integrated explanations. Theories need to be more logically sound and precise than of practical value. If theory does not fit the facts, they might disregard or re-examine the facts. Prefers lectures, reading, exploring analytical models. Need time to think things through. Learning style is converging. Abstract conceptualization plus active experimentation. They are applied scientists. Want concrete answers. Prefer to work with things versus people like hands-on experiences, wants answers quickly, asks how does this work. The converging or the deciding, 
The dominant learning modes are AC and AE. Knowledge is organized through hypothetical deductive reasoning, focus on problem and converge on an answer. Best at finding practical uses for ideas and theories, rather deal with technical task problems than interpersonal issues, prefer experimenting with ideas, simulations, live assignments and practical application. Learning style is accommodating, active experimentation and concrete experience. They are called practitioners. Take risks, focus on doing, adapt well to change, like new experiences, integrate application with experience, ask what will this become. Accommodating or acting, dominant learning modes are A and C. Interested in doing things, in carrying out plans and involving themselves in new plans, risk takers excel often where one must adapt or accommodate. If the plan doesn't fit the facts, we often disregard the facts, rely heavily on others for information than on own technical analysis, prefer to work with others to get assignments done, set goals and test different approaches. So what are the HR transformations in business and learning of the trainers? How like it is connected together like with the business objectives and when you are trainers. The partners cooperate with each other. Cooperation between and within shared services, centers of expertise and HR business partners is very important for the organization to be successful. We have discussed at length on this in the earlier lectures. Managers and staffs are empowered. Managers and staffs are empowered to make appropriate decisions and resolve issues in line with individuals' roles and areas of responsibility. Global expectations are adhered to. Adherence to global expectations is tracked, monitored and managed globally and by each group with business specific requirements. Issues are escalated only when needed. So significant decisions should be escalated upwards in which case the proper chain of command and escalation process needs to be followed. Shared accountability is understood by all. There is an understanding of shared accountability and responsibility for all HR processes and services shall rest with a clearly defined owner. Business partners and training expertise critical points. It is very important to facilitate the mindset change of the line manager who may not be initially willing or ready to team with colleagues in this newly defined HR roles. Focus on the skills and experience it takes to be credible and trusted as either a HR business partner of center of expertise colleague. Business partners and support of the training program, it is very important like as business partners to support the training program. The training program which is focused on the behaviors that most effectively support the following competencies. Understanding what delivering value means to the today's business leaders. Managing talent demands and challenging the business to innovate around talent. Working with analytics for better related decisions. Developing trusting, trusted advisor skills. Enhancing interview and presentation skills. So the both the ways the trainers have to develop in themselves, the HR partners also have to develop in themselves these competencies so that they can work hand in hand with the business leaders for the improvement of the business. So here we are trying to map out the input process, output, HR impact and business impact. In the input, it is talent acquisition plan, talent development plan, workforce plan, growth strategy, corporate strategy. In the process, it is offer acceptance rate, 
time to fill a position, high potential development, workforce development, market share. Output is new hire competence and performance ratings, employee development results, workforce competency, market share penetration enhancement. The HR impact is that of employee retention, employee engagement, voluntary turnover, upward employee mobility, and business impact is of course customer satisfaction, customer turnover, customer penetration, patents per capita. So, what we need to understand like the trainer has to understand this whole scenario of how the HR processes, the inputs and the output, they are connected with the business impact and what are the HR impact also and they need to like when they are training also the another set of trainers, they can train people on how to acquire talent properly or how to design a proper workforce plan, like how to understand like the uh, potential development needs of the employees, career development needs of the employees. We have already covered that in employee development and career growth needs. So, if this whole picture is clear in front of the trainers, then they can make the training that they deliver more meaningful and connected to the business objectives. Talent technology strategy is aligned to their talent management strategy in business. This is very important like the these two technology strategy gets aligned with the talent management strategy in business. The trainer should keep the strategies in mind that the attention is that the talent technology market and leading vendors are receiving too many organizations who are deploying such solutions without clear requirement. More importantly, many organizations have unrealistic expectations for the impact of these solutions that they are going to have. Organizations will find, as is the case with any technology, that these solutions are just tools. They won't resolve broader talent management objectives without requisite attention on other critical dimensions such as service delivery design, process design, change management and governance. Why we have put forth this point over here? Sometimes we become too much technology dependent and find like every answer to the problem lies with the technology and it is going to like deliver accordingly. But we need to understand it is an aid in the whole process. It is one of the tools which is aiding us to take a major decision or to run a training program to under to a particular training design. It is not going to answer solutions for every kind of problems that we are having and because we sometimes we need to understand what should be the blend, what is the what type of technology should be adapted based on the learning styles of the individuals and maybe the other connected factors which may be there. So, yes, it is very good that we know about the technology, but we should be prudent enough and we should be taking the decision very wisely. Technology should be used to what extent and where and the control should lie with the trainer in the delivery of the training program. There are certain steps of evaluation of the training program by the trainer, like the trainers should keep in mind about five steps of training evaluation, which is the purpose of training evaluation, selection of evaluation methods, design of tools to implement, collection of data, analysis and report results. The three stages are planning implementing and reporting. Integrated models and methods of evaluation. Popular methods and models of training evaluation are as follows. Kirkpatrick model, Jack Phillips model which is the fifth level ROI, Robert Binkerov's model which is also called success case study, 
serum model which is context input reaction outcome, CIPP model which is context input process product, Kaufman's model which is fifth level is client or society or community response and learner transfer evaluation model which is LTEM. So, based on the purpose like what purpose the training was given, we can understand the correct uh, method of evaluation and adapt it for evaluation of the training program. The Kirkpatrick and the Phillips model of training evaluation which is a during and post training has in level 1 reaction which is the participant satisfaction, level 2 is learning, knowledge, skills and other attitudes, level 3 is behavior which is application and on the job training. Level 4 is results which is participants and business impact and level 5 is return on investment. This has been discussed in week 6 lecture but uh, these are very relevant in this context also. It is very important for designing the training evaluation tools. These tools could be like questionnaires, survey forms, tests, interviews, focus group discussions observations and performance records. It is very important again to develop training evaluation the feedback form. In the light of Kirkpatrick's model of training evaluation, we can think following measures for developing training feedback form like keeping it short, staying on the topic, asking actionable questions making questions easy to answer, providing multiple choices, making it a part of the program. Jack Phillips model discusses return on investment of training. It is the relation between the financial benefits gained from a training program and the total cost of that program estimated. The purpose of an ROI analysis is generally to see whether the benefits outweigh the costs that is to see whether the investment was worth it. Like when it is calculated, there are certain conditions for calculating ROI of a training program such as the training program requires a significant financial investment. The training objectives are clearly defined and their achievement is likely to impact on areas of strategic or operational importance. There are enough learners to make an impact on the business performance and draw financial conclusions. Learners have good opportunities to apply their learning to the workplace. This is a very, very important part. Sometimes people are sent to training. But when they come back to the organization, the organization is not ready or equipped enough or prepared enough to assimilate within itself the what people have learned from the training and they are not able to like practice it in the actual work situation. So it is very important that the learners have good opportunities to apply their learning to the workplace. The data on relevant changes to performance is available. Changes in performance can be attributed credible financial values by key stakeholders. Training factors can be isolated from non-training factors and the financial benefits apportioned accordingly. Direct and indirect cost of training can be identified and roti analysis like return on training investment analysis is likely to be meaningful or important to the program sponsors. The ROI analysis must be accurate that is, is it based on actual data or professional estimates, ethical, is it respectful of legal or business issues and research standards, effective is the information what you need and will use, credible, is it verifiable, defensible and objective, well planned, have you gathered baseline data before the training begins. So we have to do a proper design 
at, like before training, after training, uh, during training, and then we have need to have a control group. So we need to understand control variables in the context which are changing, so that we can see like the change is only and only due to training. Now, some of the quality checkpoints in calculating training on investment, uh, like return on training investment, are like continuing with the previous one. It should be inclusive. Like, did you use a variety of measures and information sources? Is it efficient? Did you make use of the best evaluation of the sources? Evaluation sources. Is it logical? Is it clear and understandable to the reader? It can be collaborative. Are there a variety of stakeholders involved? Responsive. Have you allowed for unintended outcomes? Balanced. Have you included both monetary and non-monetary measures of success? So along with these previous points discussed over here, which are also the quality checkpoints, these are the other quality checkpoints that we have for calculating return on investment of training. What is the business impact and return on investment of training? Based on Kirkpatrick's model, Dr. Jack Phillips added a fifth step which gave a practical way to forecast the return on investment of training initiative. According to him, it can be calculated in a seven-stage process. Step 1. Collect pre-programmed data on performance and or skill levels. Step 2. Collect post program data on performance and or skill levels. Step 3. Isolate the effects of training from other positive and negative performance influencers. Step 4. Convert the data which could be hard and soft business measures into a monetary value that is how much actual value is the change worth to the organization. Step 5. Calculate the cost of delivering the tearing program. Step 6. Calculate the ROI, which is equal to program benefits in currency by program costs in currency. And step 7 is identify at least the intangible benefits, that is job satisfaction, stress reduction, community image, etc. Calculating the return on investment in training. What we find over there are the following function like benefits minus cost by cost into 100 is equal to the return on investment in training percentage. As a general guideline, the return on training investment levels below about 20% are usually considered to be low. In practice, however, it is quite common for return on training investment percentage figures to be very high, example 50 percent or more. Now, when we are doing a cost benefit analysis for measuring return on investment of training, it is very important to understand the typical benefits and the typical costs. The typical benefits are increase in production, reduction in errors, reduction in absenteeism, reduction in employee turnover less supervision needed, post-training or coaching, attitude change, ability to use new technologies, reduction in complaints, reduction in adverse incidents and cases, etc. The typical costs are fixed and variable costs, direct and indirect costs, like trainer salary and time, trainee salary and time, training materials, Expenses for trainers and trainees, cost of facilities and equipments, lost productivity, travel costs, accommodations, logistics, etc. The training costs also include a costs of needs and analysis surveys, course design, development or purchase. Salary of instructor and or consultant, off-site travel, lodging and meals, facilities rented or allocated, equipment and hardware, instructional and testing materials, 
sports and training evaluation and other. The tangible benefits are increased sales, improved overall quality, improved competitiveness, improved productivity per staff, improved profitability, improved customer satisfaction, improved personal relations, improved safety records, compliance with regulations, broadening the range of workers tasks, meeting a shortage of qualified labor, implementation of new ideas and others. What are the intangible benefits are improved understanding of new technologies, remediation of workers inadequate pre-employment preparations, improved understanding of markets, improved staff morale, greater cooperation between the staffs, better management staff relations, better staff understanding of the organization, greater staff flexibility, greater staff loyalty, improved staff work ethic, improved staff motivation, improved staff perception of job responsibilities, more problem solved, conflicts avoided, increased use by staff of performance measures and standards, benchmarking and quality control methods and some other benefits that we may think of. Now, calculating the return on investment of training. Some commonly used time period for ROI calculation are like there is no fixed period over which we should calculate the ROI of a training program. Some commonly used examples include from 3 months to 12 months after a training has been completed. It allows a try time for transfer of learning to the workplace. The period of a product cycle, one financial year which is the audit period, two to four financial years which is the depreciation period, average time of target audience employees remaining in the organization. The five steps to calculate the return on investment on training are identify and describe the training under analysis list the reasons for training, calculate the cost of training, calculate the benefits of training, calculate the return on training investment. To elaborate more on this, identify and describe the training under analysis is what, which is the curriculum, skills and knowledge and source, example professional standards, where, delivery and rational, if applicable, Example, classroom e-training on the job. How? Instructional approach. Example, individualized group, self-study or instructor-led. When? Duration, time frame and incidence. Example, short-term or long-term, once-off or continuous dates, actual hours of training. Who? Participation. Example, voluntary or mandatory number of trainings. Roti, unit of roti analysis is example per person, per session, per year. Number two, list the reasons for training. Business and industry context, example, challenges and or opportunities. Roti analysis perspective if applicable, example, employer perspectives, employees perspective, government's perspective, tangible outcomes, example, decreased cost, increased volume and time savings, increased retention and decreased absenteeism, intangible outcomes, example, acknowledging benefits that cannot or will not be measured, external circumstances, events that directly impact on the perceived benefits to training and payback period example immediate short term or long term number 3 is calculating the cost of training so the cost item as listed over here as we have already seen the training cost like needs assessment and training plan 
curriculum and materials development, registration or tuition fees, trainer and consultant fees, materials and equipment, facilities, refreshment, travel costs like food, transportation, lodging, assessment and certification fees, salary replacement costs and other things which will count towards the total training costs. Calculate the benefits of training in which the tangible returns categories are like time saving example like reduced supervision, absenteeism which is hours into wage into number of employees, productivity increase if applicable example quality or quantity changes due to training which is reductions in complaints, increase in sales, customer satisfaction, personal savings like reduced recruitment costs, grievances, accidents, cost of individual interventions multiplied by the incidents and other leading to the total return. Step 5 is calculate the return on training investment which is the total benefits in INR value, total cost in INR value, divide the benefits by the cost and multiply by 100 for the percentage, so which is the net benefit. So, value of benefits divided by the cost of training into 100 is giving the return on training investment percentage. So, these are the references that we have used for these discussions. So, we hope like this part of the lecture session has given a clear picture on the train the trainers, mapping impact output training, HR impact and business impact as well as training evaluation with emphasis on return on investment or training. In the next module, we will come up with the disruptions in the training program and disruptive training and more interesting topics in session 12. Stay tuned with us.